Remember the P.F. Chang sodium problem? I believe that the medium sodium content of their ditches is higher than 2300 milligrams, the recommended daily sodium intake for a normal person. We analyzed the data using the sign test, but we were unable to reject the null. I've included the sodium content for a random selection of 10 dinner entrees served at P.F. Chang's. This time, use the Wilcoxon sign ring test to test my claim at the 5% significance level. So, what we're going to do is use this test, the Wilcoxon sign ring test, in a slightly different way than we've done it before. But we're still going to use it to test a hypothesis, of course, and of course the procedure is going to have the same overall layout. The only difference is we don't have really a before and after to do our subtraction with. What we're going to do instead is we're going to actually subtract that provided medium, median here, sorry. This median they gave us of 2300, we're going to subtract that from every single data value and get a difference. And so that will be like our before and after subtraction. Instead of using, you know, a before and after or a pre post type setup or first and second type setup, we'll just subtract this median from every single number on the list here. And what we'll do then is to, you know, at the end, do the same thing we did before, come up with the absolute differences, right? Then rank those absolute differences, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that then. Um, first thing we want to do, of course, for any hypothesis test is to express the claim. So let's go ahead and start with that. So the claim for this test is my claim from before that I believe that the median sodium content is higher than 2300. So I believe that eta is greater than 2300 milligrams. So again, even the claim looks a little different because we don't really have two sets of sample data here, right? HO and HA, right? So we're going to use this procedure again in a slightly different way than we've done before. But HO and HA still follow the same rules. You know, if this claim has a greater than symbol, it must be um, HA because that's one of HA's symbols, right? And HO, of course, is the opposite statement, which is that eta is less than or equal to 2300. Now from there, we're going to, you know, as before, write down the significance level. So alpha is 0 0.05. We're still going to want to need, need to know uh, what N is. Um, what we're going to do, just like before, is we're going to make sure there are no ties. If there are any ties, we have to discard that data value. So here's 2300. Is it tied with any of these values? I don't think so. There are no ties. So we're going to go ahead and say that those are a full data set. It looks like there are 10 values if you count those up carefully, right? There's one, two, three, four, five in each row, two rows. That means n is 10. Okay, very good. Now let's go manipulate the data. What we want to do is do subtraction from every single one of those values. We're going to subtract 2300. So I've rewritten the data here on a sheet of paper. And we're actually going to go through and do the subtraction for each one of these. So I'm going to say, in each case, 6,774 minus 2300. And when we do that, we're going to end up with the answer 4,000. 474. So that's my first difference, right? I'm putting D here for differences. Then the next one is going to be 6475 minus 2300. And we get the answer 4175. Next one is 3202 minus 2300. And I get the answer 902. Then I have 2450 minus 2300. I get the answer 150. Then we're going to have 5,141 minus 2300. And I get the answer 2,841. Okay, then I'll have 3,306 minus 2300. I get the answer 1,006. Then 3,484 minus 2300. I get the answer 1,184, then 1,362 minus 2,300. I get the answer negative 938, then 2,262 minus 2,300. I get the answer negative 38, and then lastly we have 2,532 minus 2,300. All right, and when all said and done, that's 232. So there's our row of differences, right? Each one of these is a column of differences, each and every one of those. 
All right, from there, the last thing we have to do, or the next thing we have to do, is come up with the absolute value of these differences, right? So the absolute value of the differences, of course, is going to be 4, 4, 7, 4, 4, 1, 7, 5, 9, 102, 150, 2,841, 1,006, 1,184, 938, 38, and 232. So those are the absolute values of the differences. Now we need to rank them. So let's give a little rank number. So I'm going to put a little rank next to each value, right? So look at the smallest number on the list. What's the smallest number in blue that you see? I think it's 38, right? So let's give this guy rank number one, right? Rank number one. Okay, let's give the next number that's smallest on the list. So I think 150 is the next smallest. That's rank number two. This will be rank number three, right? The 200, I think that's the next smallest. That's rank number three. Then after 200, I think it's 902, right? So that would be rank number four. Then 938 would be the fifth ranked number. Then we'll have, let's see, 1006 maybe is the next smallest. That's six. And then this will be seven. And then eight. And then what? nine and 10. So there's all our ranks filled in. There were no ties, so it's nice and easy. Now, last thing we have to do is to come up with the rank total. So we need to have the T negative, the negative rank sum, and the T positive, the positive rank sum. So let's see what that comes out to be. So T negative, how many negative values do we have? Looks like we only had two negative values when we did the subtraction, right? Only two times was it negative. And the rank totals for those are five and one, which gives you six. All the others have to be T positive. So we can add them up or we can use our trick to check what the answer should be. Let's do the trick to check what the answer should be. There are 10 values, so the total number, there's 10 ranks given out, one to 10, right? So the total number of ranks should be 10 times 11 divided by two. In other words, that'll be five times 11, we should get 55. 55, sure enough, is the answer. So I'm expecting that this will be 55 minus six, since the two have to add up to the total 55. This should probably be 49. Let's see if that, in fact, is correct here. Let's add up all the ranks that I don't have circled and see what it comes out to be. So I have here 19 and six, right? That's 25 for the first row. 25 plus. Uh, this one's gonna be 14 and seven. That's 21, isn't it? So that's 21 plus three. And sure enough, we get 49, the total we're supposed to. All right, so that's very good. Now, let's go back and take these results, these results and put them on our, our, our workspace there so we know what our test stat is supposed to be now. All right, so let's at least record the T negative and the T positive first. So T negative is six. The rank total for the positive uh, ranks was 49. Now we have to look at this notation here. What this is basically saying is that the HA is saying that the eta is greater than 2300, right? The eta is greater than 2300. So let's think about what should happen. If the median sodium content of the P of Chang meals is greater than 2300, then when we do all the subtraction, we should get a lot of positive ranks, right? So that's kind of what we see here in the data, but that doesn't have to be the case. We don't have to actually see it. We're just talking about what's here theoretically. Theoretically, if the eta is bigger than 2300, then when we subtract 2300 from the values, we should get more positive than negative. So that means the underdog is the negative. So what we're going to look for is this. Our test stat is going to be the negative. Remember, that's how we do the test stat, right? So T negative equals 6 equals our test stat. For this procedure, remember, our critical value is a small number, and we're always trying to compare it against our small number based on the theory here. And if this test stat is less than that critical value, which is a small number, if it's less than or equal to it, right, then we reject the null hypothesis. That's how the procedure works. Now, of course, you can't just look here and say which number is smallest, that's your test stat, because it's a theoretical thing, right? Theoretically, here, again, we should have more uh, positive ranks than negative ranks if this is true, because if this is true, if we're subtracting 2300 from bigger numbers, we'll get positive differences. So we'd expect that the smaller rank should be negative. Now, it happens to pan out or work out the way we expected it to work out here, according to HA, but you can't just cheat and look at this to determine what your test stat is, because sometimes the data doesn't reflect the claim, right, or the HA. Okay, but either way, that's your test stat. You know T negative is your test stat. Next step is to get our critical value. So to get our critical value, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our table, right? And we're going to go to our table and we're going to look up certain values. So we're going to go to alpha equals 0 0.05 in one tail, right? 
It's a one-tailed test because in one, it says one-tailed, it should have said one-tailed, sorry, but in a one-tailed test, right? So in other words, because this is greater than, it's a one-tailed test, so 0.05, then we're gonna look up n equals to 10 as well. And that will help us get our critical value. So let's go do that now. Okay, so we're on our assigned ring test table. We're going to where n is 10 and 0.05 in one tail. So 0.05 in one tail is the first value. And so n is 10, that's gonna mean our T naught, our T critical value is going to be 11. So T naught is 11. Okay, so our T critical value, our T naught value, turns out to be 11 in this problem. So what that means is that since our test stat, t negative, which is equal to 6, is less than or equal to t naught, which is 11, we reject HO. So remember, that's the rejection condition, right? If your test statistic is less than your critical value or equal to your critical value in this test, we reject HO. So if you reject HO, of course you support HA, right? Support HA. And now you can see that we're rejecting this and supporting my claim. So I'm vindicated finally, right? My claim was that the P of Chang sodium content was higher than the daily sodium intake that's recommended for an individual for an entire day. I claim that that number, this 2300, was um, below their median sodium intake. And so I was right here. I finally have shown it with this procedure. So we spoke about this during the sign test. We had said that um, you know, sometimes when the test has low power, it's unable to reject a null hypothesis that should be rejected. And now we see that when we use a procedure called the Winthcox and sign rank test, we're actually able to reject the null hypothesis like we wanted to. So we reject HO, support HA, that means we're going to say the sample data supports the claim, right? Because our claim is the same as HA. So the sample data supports the claim. By the way, this is um, those are real sodium contents for P of dishes at P of Chang's, 10 randomly chosen dishes from P of Chang's. So this sample data is actually real, and so I would say we've basically just conducted a hypothesis test which shows that the sodium content is rather high for the dishes at P of Chang's.